Hello and welcome to One and All. Today we have Australia's one of the leading pace sensations with us. She is known to be one of the fastest bowlers going around in the world of women's cricket. Juggling between academics and cricket, she has come out with flying colors in both. Just recently, that is in the year 2021, she made her international debut for Australia against India in the Test and ODI format. Also, on January 6 this year, she gave one of her best career performances, which was 7 for 25 against ACT Meteors during the WNCL. So to talk more about this Australia's young talent and of course one of the fastest bowlers going around in the world of women's cricket, we have Stella Campbell herself with us. So I welcome Stella on this show. Thank you. Hello. It's so good to be here and to chat with you. Same, same here. It is a pleasure to have you, Stella, with us. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Okay. So, Stella, now we know that you are one of the leading fast bowlers in the world of women's cricket. But how did it all begin for you? Um, yeah. So, I started cricket when I was in primary school and I pretty much just followed in the footsteps of my big sister because she played and um, I wanted to play and be like her and play every sport that I could. So, I just signed up to my team and I fell in mm. love with it and um, yeah, I guess just progressed from there and yeah, kept, kept mm. enjoying it as much as I do now. Great, great. So as you said, you had your elder sister whom you looked up for inspiration. How was the support from the parents and how was the culture at home? Yeah, it's. I've grown up in a very loving and caring and supportive family, so I've been incredibly fortunate to have their support. Yeah. Um, and they all really enjoy cricket as well, so um, yeah. it's really good, and I'm really lucky to have that. Um, and yeah, like I said, my big sister was a, a large inspiration of mine when I was younger. So, um, but yeah, no, I absolutely have had the most amazing childhood, and um, yeah, the love and support of my family has been awesome. Amazing, amazing. So I'm sure without your sister and of course your family, it couldn't have possible for you to, you know, become an Australian cricketer and of course play international cricket. Yeah, definitely. It definitely wouldn't have been um, as, as it has been um, so far. So I'm, yeah, incredibly grateful to them and definitely owe a lot of my success to them. Wonderful. All right. So, so you said you began your cricket in the childhood, but when did New South Wales happen for you? Um, yeah, so I think I got uh, my first contract for New South Wales when I was 16. And um, at that time, I still didn't really understand it. And I still didn't comprehend what I was actually doing. Um, and I think, you know, being 16, it's quite hard to understand yeah. at that age. But um, yeah. I guess I didn't expect to play or anything mm -hmm. like that. But um, I mm -hmm. ended up making my debut that year. So um, it's pretty crazy to look back on now, thinking, you know, 16 years old, representing your state. Um, but it's mm -hmm. something that I'm incredibly proud of and something that I'll cherish forever, I think. Right. Because in uh, one of the interviews, I think I read that you wanted to become a teacher when you were growing up. Yeah, so, I so. think I've, <laughs> I've had a lot of different aspirations when I was a child. I think I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a vet. Um, I've had a lot of different uh, jobs that I've wanted to do. But um, yeah, teacher was one of them. But uh, definitely cricket at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and we are glad that you chose cricket over anything else, like being a teacher or a vet for that matter. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, New South Wales and then, of course, Sydney Sixers. So you have been there with Sydney Sixers from season two, if I'm not wrong, of the WBBL. Yeah, so I was um, with the Sixers in WBBL 02. I think I was just as a rookie, so I wasn't playing. I was just sort of in and around training and learning as much as I can, but I wasn't sort of a part of the team as such. Okay, okay. But you had the likes of Elisa Healy, Ellis Perry in the dressing room. So Yeah, how exactly. Did you so how did you learn from Perry? Because I'm sure that Perry must have been your inspiration growing up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she's sort of the one in the spotlight that a lot of young girls look up to. Um, and she's an awesome athlete to look up to. And mm -hmm. yeah, definitely someone that I aspired to be like. So to be in the same mm -hmm. dressing room as her, to be around her at training, um, that's just an in, invaluable experience and something that I learned so much at such a young age. And 
I was so lucky to be in that position because, yeah, again, it's probably mm. contributed to my success now that I was able to mm. learn off such amazing athletes at such a young age yeah. and just being around them at training, you know, it's, it's, you can't not learn in that environment. So mm. it was, yes, invaluable. And I'm, yes, yeah, so lucky to have experienced that. Right. And then, of course, talking about Anisa Healy, whom the world knows that she's one of the devastating batters that we have. So were you nervous to bowl to her in the next, the very first time? Um, yes, very nervous. Um, I did a few net bowling things with the Australian girls and um, I just remember being so nervous and so afraid and I think I was quite shy back then as well. So I didn't probably didn't say many words. So um, I probably was in my shell a bit. Um, and I know Elisa says that now I've come out of my shell and um, I like it to enjoy the competition that we have in the nets now. But back then mm -hmm. I was very afraid and very nervous. <laughs> so, so from being afraid and being a shy Stella Campbell to receiving, I think your baggy green from any Sperry. How has the journey been for you so far? Yeah, it's it's crazy to reflect on um, how much has happened in that period of time and looking back at, you know, being a young, shy Stella Campbell mm -hmm. to now sort of, you know, hopefully a bit more outgoing and um, enjoying <laughs> my cricket and playing at a high level. Um, yeah, it's crazy to look back on how, how that has all progressed in, in that time, but um, I've enjoyed every moment of it and, yeah, I've had so many ex amazing experiences um, and been so fortunate to be involved in some amazing teams Teams, um, mm. highs and lows but um, yeah look every moment I've learned so much and I continue to learn each day right so so just uh, going back a bit uh, to 2020 WBBL 06 you had your 12th standard exams going on as well so how did you manage your 12th exams um, on WBBL yeah, that was a, a crazy time again. Um, yeah, so doing my final year of school, um, along with being in the WBBL hub um, because of COVID. So it was it was a little bit of a crazy experience and um, one that I wouldn't like to do again. Um, but uh, I'm glad it's definitely done. But yeah, it was kind of just within me to be motivated to complete both. I obviously wanted to do well in school and prioritize that, but, um, you know, I obviously wanted to perform for the sixes as well, but, um, I guess I just had to manage my time really well and, and be yeah. determined and motivated to do both and, and manage both. Absolutely. And I think you have mastered both given that you excelled in your academics as well as in your cricket for sixes. Yes. Yes. So well, hopefully <laughs> I was, I was happy with both. All right. Okay. So last year, 2021, you made your international debut. Finally, I think all your hard work and effort over the years, you know, bore fruits or reaped fruits, we can say, when you made your international debut against India. So tell us about that moment when you announced yeah. that Stella Campbell will be playing in the playing level. Yes, um, that was another awesome experience. Um, yeah, I guess looking back on it now, it is nice to reflect and hopefully see that, you know, hard work does pay off and you can definitely get rewarded for that. So that's a really nice feeling in itself. But um, yeah, I guess when I was told that I was going to be playing, I was in shock. Um, I didn't even think that I would be on that tour in the first place. So oh. just being there for me was um, amazing mm -hmm. and ex so, such an invaluable experience. Um again but uh yeah announced that i was playing um i obviously was over the moon i was so excited and nervous and um mm -hmm. yeah all the emotions pretty much but um i rang my parents straight away and they both started crying <laughs> and um yeah it was just a whirlwind of ex emotions because i was just so overjoyed but um mm -hmm. i was just really proud and excited that you know i was going to be able to represent my country which is something that i've wanted to do ever since i started mm -hmm. playing cricket so um, yeah, to be able to achieve that, it was incredibly special and it's definitely a moment that I'll cherish forever. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so let, us, uh, let us cut down this experience into one fine moment that I would like to ask you. So on September 26, you played the third ODI against India and your first wicket, Yastika Bhatia, the Indian <laughs> batter. So it was a difficult catch. You bowled a very good bouncer. But was your heart in the mouth when the ball was in the air and Molly Strano was getting under it? <laughs> yes, um, it definitely was. Um, it was. It, I didn't. I wasn't too happy with my bowling that day. Um, mm -hmm. But 
to get rewarded with that wicket was um, very cool. And, um, yeah, it was an amazing catch. And, um, yeah, I think for a moment there it was just sort of like I was holding my breath, um, you know, wondering what would happen. Mm -hmm. Um, And then she took that absolute screamer. And, um, yeah, it was just all joy from there. And that moment is another one that um, I'll put in the memory bank because it it was incredibly special to have all those girls get around you and celebrate like Mm -hmm. the way they did. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cool. And, yeah, awesome for Molly to get that catch as well I think um, it won't be forgotten anytime soon absolutely absolutely so now coming to more recent times on January 6 you picked up seven for 25 including three wickets in one over I think uh, probably that is one of your best career performances to date so yeah tell us, tell, us, <laughs> the, tell us tell us more about that Stella um, yeah, look, that day is a little bit of a blur. Um, there's obviously a lot going on um, regarding COVID and that situation and travelling mm. down there. But, um, mm. yeah, look, looking back on it now, um, it's sort of weird one to reflect on because I'd never taken that many wickets. Um, I think the most I'd taken before that was maybe a three class. So um, mm. to say I've taken seven is um, really cool and yeah, it's sort of something I never thought that I would be able to do. You know, you see people take sixpers and, and that sort of mm-hmm. thing. And I sort of think, oh, I've never done that. So, you know, I won't be able to do that. But, um, yeah, I guess another one where your hard work pays off and yeah. you're able to um, succeed if you if you work hard. So, um, yeah, that was an incredibly special day. And, um, yeah, look, reflecting back on all the wickets is pretty cool. Um, and, um, yeah, I guess it was a really nice feeling to – to be able to say that I've taken seven wickets. Awesome. Many congratulations to you once again on that. And uh, hope you continue to have more such performances in the future. Oh, thank you. Great, great. Okay, now uh, we have an important year ahead of us. Of course, you being a part of Australia A squad for the England A series. And then, of course, World Cup in mind. And then, again, Commonwealth Games. So how are you preparing yourself for this action-packed year? Yeah, um, there's obviously a lot going on, which is um, super exciting for women's cricket in general. I think it's so cool to have so much cricket on our calendar. Um, But yeah, look, for the moment, I'm just taking each day as it comes. Um, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to be involved in all of it. Um, You know, I just want to focus on what I can control in the next few months, at least in the next few weeks coming up against England A um, and just trying to put on good performances on the board and, you know, see where that gets me. But um, look, even if I'm not involved in all those teams um, I think it's just going to be so amazing to watch and mm-hmm. and follow along um, it's going to be an awesome Ashes series and then you know following that with the World Cup is going to be even cooler so yeah look if I'm not involved then you know I'll come back to New South Wales and hopefully put on some mm-hmm. good performances there and we can yeah mm-hmm. hopefully go go the way to winning the um, trophy for the New South Wales Breakers but um, yeah look I'm just taking each day as it comes now and just trying to control what I can of course we all hope that you are there in that Australian squad during the World Cup and, of course, playing against India as well, once again, because it is India that you made your debut against. So let us hope that you get a chance to do that again. Yes, thank you. That would be um, very cool if I could be involved in that. Um, I've obviously got some Indian friends in Radha and Shafali now, so um, it would be awesome to come against them, come up against them, and, yeah, hopefully there's a bit of banter. <laughs> let, us, let us hope to see that. So, so let me ask you, how was it bowling to Shefani Verma? Because we all know that she's a great batter. How was it bowling to her in the next? Yes, she um, is definitely a challenge to bowl to. Um, but yeah, look, she was she was awesome. Um, she's she's a class talent at such a young age, um, and I certainly enjoy watching her bat when she's going at her best. Um, but yeah, definitely a challenge to bowl to, but um, one that I enjoy throwing a few bounces at. Um, <laughs> It's quite enjoy. It's quite fun, and um, yeah, look, we had a lot of fun in the nets. But um, yeah, look, obviously she's a class batter, and she's got a really bright future ahead of her. Great, great. Okay, so Stella Campbell has already clocked in 118 kilometers per hour on the speedometer, and what what is your dream number that you are looking to achieve with your speed? Um, oh, I don't know if I necessarily have a dream number. Um, I just like to keep increasing, I guess. But, you know, with speed, you know, you want accuracy and, and all that. So, look, if I can be bowling fast and accurate at the same time, then that's the dream for me. Um, 
yeah, not necessarily a, a number or anything, but yeah, obviously mm -hmm. I just want to keep increasing because we've seen how much speed can can impact um, batters and how much it is effective in taking wickets. So no pressure to get um, to a certain number, but yeah, just if I'm feeling good and bowling fast, mm -hmm. then then I'll be happy. All right. So okay, Stella. So it was wonderful talking to you. But before we sign off, let me ask one of the fastest bowlers in the world of women's cricket some rapid fire questions. Okay. Right. So number one is who is your favorite cricketer? Um, at the moment, Manus Labashain. I love watching him bat, um, and I've enjoyed watching him in this Ashes series. Great. And one woman's cricketer? Um, I would say Elisa Healy. All right. Your teammate, of course, in Sixers as well as in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Your, your favorite cricket ground? Um, I would say the WACA, the Western Australian cricket ground. Um, yeah, nice, fast, bouncy wicket. All right. Your favorite teammate from the WBBL? Um, Maitland Brown. We got along quite well. All right. Okay. I think she also plays for New South Wales, right? Now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great, great. And one batter who is, you know, challenging for you to bowl to? Um, probably Sophie Devine from New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. Very, very good T20 batter. Um, is very hard to tie down. Okay, and one final thing. To whom, like to which batter would you like to bowl to in the future? Um, ooh, this is a tough one. Um. I would say Shmidi Mandana. I would love the opportunity to bowl to her again. Um, she is obviously outstanding and had made a great century in the test match. Um, but, yeah, I would love the opportunity to bowl to her. I think it would be a real challenge. Wonderful, wonderful. So, Stella, again, thank you for your time. And it was wonderful talking to you. And uh, no we worries. wish you uh, great. And we wish you all the very best for all your future tournaments because I know they are very important for you. And we hope to see you back in the Australian colors soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting. Same here. Have a great day ahead. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.